I'm Liz Anelli and I'm here today to launch my brand new book, Dry to Dry, illustrated by me and written by the wonderful Pamela Freeman. This book is another in the Nature Story series brought out by Walker Books. So you may remember that Pamela Freeman and I, a few years ago, we had Desert Lake that was set in Lake Eyre, Lake Katitanda. This one, this time, we've been to the exciting world of Kakadu National Park. There's thousands and thousands of different birds, animals and plants that live there in the very demanding environment because up there in Kakadu National Park, they don't just have spring, summer and autumn. They have about eight seasons and the extremes from very dry to humid to torrential monsoon downpours has a really big effect on what lives there and how the process of life, the circle of life goes around. So there's so much to see in this book. Like all the other nature story series picture books, this is a mixture of a lovely lyrical poetic story that runs along the book in one text and then at the bottom of the page in a different font so you're really clear which is which, there's lots of fantastic facts and figures about the, the things that live in the Kakadu National Park. It's also got an index in the back and of course, being me, I've made a lovely illustrated map so you can find your way around should you ever go visit the Kakadu National Park and it shows you where Kakadu is in Australia. It's got an index with the names of different species so you can look them up and do some more study. But most importantly, it's got a great story about the circle of life that goes on in the National Park. So how do I get, as an illustrator, from a manuscript, which is just a bunch of words, to this, a finished picture book full of colour and intrigue and pattern? Well, I'll let you into a few little secrets if you take a look at what I've got down here on my table. So it might look like I've just been playing and having fun. What I do when I'm making a picture book is I spend a lot of time just looking, just looking around. I do have to go to the places, so I made a couple of trips to Kakadu National Park and I, I take a sketchbook with me and I made loads of little studies of the things that I saw there, mostly looking at colours and patterns. I would also be taking lots and lots of photographs for reference so that I can use them when I get back to my studio. So the most fun part is finding a way of using the materials I've got in my studio, the paints and the pencils and the printmaking stuff, in a way that captures not just what the things look like that's in the book, but how did they feel, how did they make me feel, what their textures were like, how can I capture that? Over here, I've mixed some ink with some washing up liquid to make it go all bubbly. I also like to take some paint and paint over magazine pages because I love the, the way you can move the paint around on the glossy surface and then just let that dry um, and then cut some shapes out like these are now turned into water lilies. And these are those famous Leichhardt's glasshoppers. What amazing creatures they are. They are honestly this color, bright blue and bright orange. So what else do I want to tell you about an illustrator? Yes, how do I get from words to pictures? Well, I make what's called a storyboard. So I do tiny thumbnail sketches of each page, dividing the text up. And from there, I slowly, slowly, with all this experimentation in mind, will produce a line drawing. This one's got a hole in it because I didn't like that bit there and I cut it out. This is a line drawing planning out where everything is going to go on just one double page of the picture book. And you can see I've also tried to work out how the text can look interesting weaving around the water lilies in the misty water. And from there, when I've done that for every single page, then I'll make a, what's called a dummy book which puts everything in order because it's really important to build the tension up as you go through the book, not just with the words, how the phrases are, but with the colour and the drama and what we call the composition, you know, the way that, see the sweep of birds are coming down across the page from left to right and they're leading your eye across to this massive thunderstorm and then you've got the bright yellow of the new morning with the magpie lark singing. These pages towards the back of the book needed to carry the information, the, the index, which is quite a lot of text. So as an illustrator, I need to make um, lots of space there. And then the end pages of this book were an aerial view 
that I had flying over Kakadu National Park, which was the most exciting plane ride I've ever had in my life. So I hope you'll enjoy reading this and making some work of your own. Maybe you want to get out in, maybe not up to a Kakadu National Park, but get out in your backyard and have a really good look at what lives there and see if you can write some stories and make some pictures based on the amazing beasts and plants and things that live in your backyard. Hopefully you don't have crocodiles, but I can tell you there are crocodiles in this book. Hello and welcome to Story Scoop. I'm Miss Penelope Pollywaffle and today we're here with author Nat Amore. Oh, actually it's Nat Amore? Yes, well it sounds more sophisticated the way I say it. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Today, we will be discussing her new book, The Power of Positive Pranking. Oh, well that title just sounds like a whole lot of mischief. Do I really want my audience reading this and getting all kinds of rambunctious ideas? Well, I mean, well, yes, it's a, it's a book about pranking, I mean, um, but you are missing a very important part of the title, Miss Polly Waffle. Um, it's positive pranking. So, yes, kids, if you want to get some really great idea for pranks, then you'll find them in here. But it's about more than that. It's about using pranking to bring about change in the world. It's about finding your voice, making yourself heard, and also kind of like finding your own activist superpower. Yes, very well. Now it looks like this is actually your second book. You wrote something else about money? Yeah, Secrets of a Schoolyard Millionaire. I mean, yeah, it's about money, but it's about more than that. It's about friendship and families and, well, making some really bad decisions despite the best of intentions. Yes, well, we're not here to plug all your books, are we? Ah, oh, sorry, Miss Polly Waffle. Now, is this book a sequel? Do I have to go and read the other one first? Because I'm very busy, you know. Oh, yes, of course you're very busy. Um, no, it's not actually a sequel. I guess what you'd call it is a companion novel. So you can totally read The Power of Positive Pranking by itself as a standalone novel, but both the books that are set in the same world, you know, the same town, uh, the main characters from both books go to the same primary school. So if you do read Secrets of a Schoolyard Millionaire first, there are some kind of like, I don't know, I like to think of them as Easter eggs for the people who have read the first book. So even though the two books have different main characters, you will find a bunch of the same characters appear in both books. Oh, well that sounds like far too many characters. I prefer books with one character. Easier to follow. But if there's only one character, who do they talk to? Talking is highly overrated. I say less talking, more listening. Especially if it's to me. So would you like me to talk less? Because that could make this interview kind of awkward. I like awkward. Okay. Well. I guess we should talk about it, the characters in your book. <sighs> Where do you get the ideas for your characters? Uh, I can talk, right? Okay. Oh, oh, funny you should ask that. Um, the ideas for my characters actually come from a whole bunch of different places. Uh, for example, the main character, Casey Wu, in this book, she actually appears in Secrets of a Schoolyard Millionaire, but she's only in the book for not even half a page, and all that I really say about her is that she's the school prankster. And then if you look at Grandpa, or Argok, um, who's one of my favourite characters in this book, he's kind of like a mashup between my dad and my grandma. So sometimes I get my characters from real life, and then sometimes my characters like Zeke, they just come from nowhere, from my imagination. I just really liked the idea of Zeke thinking he was a ninja um, and no one really believing him, but then him kind of like proving that he has serious ninja skills. So characters can come from anywhere. Characters can come from anywhere. Well, that's very unspecific. Sounds like you're a bit all over the place. Yeah, that pretty much sums me up. 
Well, that's very unhelpful for someone like me who enjoys structure and consistency and cornflakes without milk. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Pollywaffle. I definitely don't want to be unhelpful. Well, it just comes naturally to some people. Now, please tell me there's at least some resources for people out there. Oh yeah, there's like heaps of cool stuff out there in relation to my book. Stuff that you can use in the classroom or for activity prompts. Here's just a few. For the launch of my book, I got together a superstar lineup of kids creators to do a mashup reading of the first chapter of The Power of Positive Pranking. Or maybe you could check out the Oslin video I did with my mate Levi where we chat about the book. And then there's that time I had too much time on my hands and spent a couple of days in my room making a stop motion Lego unboxing video. And of course, you can head to the Penguin Random House teachers page to check out the teachers notes. And Children's Books Daily did some great teachers notes, The Secrets of a Schoolyard Millionaire. Okay, well I think that's probably about enough from you for today. Okay, well, thanks for having me, it was a real pleasure. Well, of course it was a pleasure for you. But think about me. Now, where did I put my signing off script? Should be here somewhere. Just, just wait here a second, will you? Try not to touch anything. Ah oh, yes, here it is. <laughs> the power of positive breaking. Check it out. <laughs> Hi, I'm Candice Lemon Scott, and I'm the author of 14 books. Uh, I've written. The Jake in Space uh, six book series, science fiction action adventures for kids. Uh, and Aussie Chomp, Stinky Ferret and the JJs. A couple of Little Rockets, uh, Silver the Silly Sorcerer and Hubert and the Magic Glasses. A Space Reader, Young Adult Novel. And my latest series, The Eco Rangers, which is what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Um, the second book in the series, Microbat Mayhem, has uh, just been shortlisted for the Wilderness Society's Environmental Awards for Children's Literature, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, and also, I want to talk about Wildfire Rescue, that's my latest release. Uh, this one just came out uh, in January this year, right in the middle of the Australian bushfire crisis, coincidentally. Uh, but I'm really hoping that will then be especially helpful for kids right now. And also uh, this year's theme for the CBCA uh, Book Week, which has been postponed to October this year, um, is Curious Creatures, Wild Minds. So the Eco Rangers books are about a couple of kids, Ebony and Jay, my Eco Rangers, who help look after wildlife and animals and solve environmental mysteries. Uh, so they're adventurous, they're curious, a uh, bit independent, uh, and they have a lovely friendship. Uh, they're based a lot of my own kids who love animals and nature, and that's really what gave me the idea for this series. And uh, when I came up with the idea, I did my wildlife care course down at Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary to learn how animals, uh, wildlife are rescued, rehabilitated and released. And that's what these kids do working with their wildlife hospital to help animals. Uh, but they're also a mystery, so there's always some other environmental issue at play that they have to solve. I thought I'd also share with you some of the activities that you can do with students and kids. I have heaps of teacher's notes uh, relating to the individual books in the Eco Ranger series or the series as a whole, and the link is provided for that. Uh, and I also thought I'd share with you some of the things that I do with kids in schools and libraries and so on and online through my online visits. And you can just use these in your classroom, library or at home. So the first one which I've provided a link for is this um, My Wildlife Animal Worksheet. Uh, so it just gives the kids an opportunity to pick a wildlife animal. They might like to talk about their favourite animal. They can draw it 
the younger ones especially. Uh, there's also opportunity to talk about descriptive writing, describing the animal and putting in some animal facts with a little bit at the bottom about what makes that animal special. So that's a good activity that you can do. You're most welcome to download that one. And that can also be a jumping off point for some other kind of writing activities and things that tie in with English and science. So a couple of those are, for example, uh, they can research a particular wildlife animal. So finding out facts. It can also be good as a descriptive, write, descriptive writing activity as well. Uh, and then other things I sometimes do is things like uh, writing from the point of view of the wildlife animal. So that can be tied in with discussion on natural disasters or it can just be a general kind of rescue or looking after animals or seeing the world through the eyes of the animal and how they live. Uh, and another one is writing their own kind of wildlife rescue story. And I do tie that one in with character. So I think character is a really good one to explore. And I've got a little segment now I'll show you about how I talk about which characters I put in my stories. So something I like to talk about and do activities with is character. And in mysteries, we have particular types of characters that I like to talk about, which is a lot of fun. So I thought I'd just run through a bit of that that you might like to use. Uh, so obviously in Eco Rangers, we're going to have our main characters as our heroes who are Ebony and Jay, the Eco Rangers. So then we also obviously have our wildlife friends which vary through the book. So first one we have Poseidon the Pelican in Microbat Mayhem. Uh, I've got my little Microbat babies. And in Wildfire Rescue, I have this little ringtail possum. So we've got our heroes and our um, wildlife friends that we that they help, but we also have our helpers. So the kids are going to need people to help them with all this, which is the vets, Dr. Bat and Dr. Tan, who are in the, all the stories from the wildlife hospital. And last of all, we have baddies because they're a lot of fun to play around with in stories. So here we've got our cruise ship cronies. Uh, this one is the theme park manager. And I also talk about how baddies don't necessarily have to be a person. So in Wildfire Rescue, the natural disaster, the bushfires themselves are the baddie that they're up against in the story. So that's another idea of weaving in those important characters into a story and forming a framework around that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. I hope you find that helpful and useful. But you're so welcome to get in touch with me anytime because I really like to make those connections with people who are reading my books. Uh, you can jump on my website and just email me or get in touch, download those activities. Love to hear from you and chat more if you would like to. Thanks.